Jim from Basement Gun Shop. Uh, let's see, where do we start? First off, July 4th, 2017. Waiting for the festivities to begin. So I got a package yesterday and I thought I would do a quick unboxing. Uh, as many of you know who have watched this channel, not only am I a gun nut, uh, I am also an amateur, a licensed amateur radio operator. Uh, in other words, I am. So, one of my friends found this really cool little product online the other day called BitX40. One of the most daunting things of being an amateur radio operator is the cost of equipment. Um, ICOM, which is the Cadillac, they have radios that are uh, for uh, all mode, all bands, uh, covers from like 1.5 megahertz up into the or 1.5 yeah 1.5 megahertz all the way up into the gigahertz range that are like eleven thousand um, dollars absolutely ridiculous but they are just amazing to even look at so there is a uh, definitely a, a financial investment in the hobby of, of being an amateur radio operator. So a friend of mine found this cool little product online called the BitX40 and it is a do-it-yourself DIY 40 meter or seven and a half megahertz single sideband phone or voice transceiver, transmitter receiver. Um, it's also low power, tops out about at most 10 watts, uh, more like seven and a half or seven watts. Uh, but even so, <clears throat> you can make some fairly distant contacts on seven and a half watts when you're transmitting in the 40 meter band. That being said, what really caught my eye was the price. And I immediately ordered two of them. To me, being a ham means, you know, doing it yourself, building your own radio, being self-sufficient. Um, in case of a disaster, uh, amateur radio operators are called upon all across the world to help out uh, with communications. Uh, you know, the most recent, the hurricanes in New Jersey, Hurricane Sandy down in uh, New Orleans. So, a ham radio in this country has a long and established history of working with uh, government emergency agencies, okay? And, and that's part of it when you're studying for your license. It's drilled into you how we're there to help. In fact, the logo for my local radio club says amateur radio exists for the service of others, okay? So, um, th these kits were awesome, honestly. I read over the specs real quick online, didn't pay much attention, saw the price, two of them. Oh, they were built by a fellow ham in India and they're marketed by a fellow ham in India. Uh, payment was through PayPal. And yesterday the DHL courier rolled up on my front door, knocked, rang the bell, and left my package and went. And there were two of these boxes just like this. So for the first time I'm gonna do a quick unboxing video and then talk about maybe what I plan to do with it. Back in a sec. So this is my first tabletop review, if you will, or unboxing video. I don't think I've ever done one before. Um, so let's see what we got. I actually unboxed one already, but I decided to uh, do this with this one. So here's the bit X40. Um, comes in this plastic box that you can actually use as a chassis to put the radio together if you if you want. Although I've seen some videos online where people have used this and it's a real tight fit. But let's get down to what's in the box. What's in the box? <laughs> we have a list of the parts in the box. And uh, that list is a bit X40 board and a Raduino board or Radino board. So, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. 
Let me get the knife back out. Got to cut some tape. Don't want to damage the bubble wrap because I want to save this and box it back up then. All right, so <laughs> this is the Redino board, which is your basically your display. Uh, when it's all powered up, it will display the frequency that you're listening on and transmitting on. And this is the guts of the Bit X40, which is the actual Bit X40 board. This is the radio right here. There it is. Now, there is some soldering and some connections that have to be made. Let's set this. Ooh, boy, that heat sink feels loose. Eh, we're good. <laughs> and then you have all these little bitty parts right here. So, oop. Ooh, another small part dropping out. We'll get to those. So here you have several two-pin connectors, uh, a, a couple of three-pin connectors, a five-pin, and an eight-pin. And they're to make basically, <clears throat> excuse me, all the connections between this board here and here. Uh, there are instructions online at HF sigs.com I'll throw a link in the video and down in the description <laughs> um, the directions are available online saves money they don't have to print they don't have to spend money on ink or toner or anything else um, and I get it keep the cost low so here's the the wire connectors and then you have a 10k log pot I don't know if you can hear that or not with an on off switch for your volume you've got a 10k ohm linear pot for adjusting your frequency <laughs> you've got a 12 volt DC power connector so you can wire that up however you choose <laughs> you've got a BNC connector for the antenna lead <laughs> you've got two little come on out of there <laughs> there we go you have uh, two little QIC jacks for headphones and a microphone or a speaker. Let's set these down in here so they're not bouncing around with the boards. <laughs> and then you've got this little bitty button microphone. Just that. Which, of course, has to be soldered. You've got a push to talk button. A 100 microfarad capacitor that gets soldered onto the volume pot. And we're going to set that here. And then you've got all the hardware. Uh, basically, the locking rings for the potentiometers. You've got standoffs. There we go. Standoffs for the board. Uh, mounting screws that will fit through the corner of the board and into the standoff. Um, what else is in here? You got little nuts <laughs> uh, to uh, that screw onto the bottom of the standoff for connecting it to the chassis and making sure that 
the bottom of the board or anything else doesn't contact anything metal if we're going to use a metal chassis. Um, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's what you get with the Bit X40. Uh, again, I got two of these for $138. <laughs> which I think is just flat out awesome. So now that I got that all boxed back up to keep the pieces part safe, like I said, I got two of them because they were just so inexpensive. Um, one of the major hurdles that I'm gonna have to overcome is finding an antenna or building an antenna that will work for 40 meters that is portable. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, an antenna pretty much has to be some segment of the length of the wavelength that you're transmitting on to be tuned for that frequency. So obviously if you're on 40 meters, a full wave antenna is going to be 40 meters long. That's 120 feet. That's not too portable. So um, I'm going to have to do a lot of research and find out exactly what I can do with 40 meters. Now, if I could buy something like a BNC connected telescoping antenna, that would be awesome. That would be the best uh, for what I want to do. I just want to make a little QRP, which is ham slang or Q code for low power go kit. And I want to put it in this, a plastic ammo can. Now everything, excuse me, still slurping coffee. Everything that came in that kit is right here. Here's the board with all the wires pinned out. I went in, went through this kit and did an inventory. Made sure all the connections were good. Made sure all the, made sure I had enough wires and, and enough wired, pre-wired connectors. Um, for both the BitX40 board and the Arduino board and display. And then, uh, I, you'll notice I already put the standoffs on these. That way I'm not losing any pieces parts. So I got eight screws, eight standoffs, and eight nuts for the standoffs, the locking rings and everything, and one extra two pin connector, and a bunch of little rubber bands. So that, that held all the wired connectors together. So that's what came in it. So the problems I gotta tackle with this <laughs> are, mounting the antenna. I don't want to violate the integrity of this ammo can because being that it's plastic and it has a rubber grommet in it, it's pretty much water, I won't say watertight, but I will say water resistant. <laughs> so I would much prefer to keep this intact and make all the alterations in a, inside the box. So I'm gonna have to make, I figure, uh, a, a plate a certain length where I can mount the board and then mount the display board, the push to talk button, the volume frequency tuning, the connections for the mic and speaker, um, and then keep, uh, the, like I said, this is a 12, vo 12 volt board. So get some 12 volt lantern batteries to put in here somewhere. Um, I'm gonna have to pick them up, obviously. I don't have any laying around the house. Um, I should but I don't. So I'm gonna to have to get them together and get them wired up to supply power to the unit and then just figure out the space constraints inside the box. Um, if I could find, like seriously, my, my best hope is if I can find a BNC connected telescoping antenna that's quarter wave or one eighth wave for 40 meters <laughs> that will shrink down to fit diagonally across the lid here, that would be awesome. Because then I could have the little stick microphone laying right across the top, an earbud laying in here already connected, 
I could have the antenna right here, uh, just fabricate some clips to glue in here so they don't, I don't have to drill through the lid or anything because like I said I don't want to violate the integrity of the box unless I absolutely have to. Um, and, and get that in here and then that way when I go out to the Radio Club's Grove or we go out for field day, uh, which by the way was just past the third full weekend in June or the last full weekend in June is uh, ARRL field day. And you do get bonus points for field day for operating on low power, I believe. Um, <clears throat> well, anyhow, um, you know, this is all in the future. This is just, I'm just kind of like brainstorming on what I want to do with this. So, that's just it. If I can find that BNC connected telescoping antenna or maybe even build one for 40 meters, that would be awesome. And then I could have it all right here. All I'd have to do is grab this and go. I got battery operated communications, seven watts on 40 meters. Pop the antenna off the clip, hook it up, put it up, turn it on and go. So those are my big plans and big ideas for this little QRP 40 meter kit. The Bit X40 from hfsigs.com or HF Signals. Um, made by a fellow ham in India. Um, I've seen videos of them online and they work great if they're soundly built. And I mean if the person building it doesn't screw something up. I've also seen videos where a guy fried a couple of wires because he had something shorted out, too much current, and the insulation just fried right off the wire. So there are drawbacks. Anytime you do something DIY, you always run the risk of making mistakes and screwing something up. But hopefully, if I'm careful, in a very short order, I'll have an $85 40 meter single sideband voice radio that I can just carry out in the middle of nowhere and get on. So, we'll see, stay tuned, we'll see how it works out. So, until next time, this is Jim from Basement Gun Shop. You like the channel, like it, subscribe, even better. Stay safe, keep shooting, get on the air, have fun. Happy Fourth of July.